Sandoval, lifestyle organizing expert with Organize Zen. I have been inspired to create a video series featuring inspiring solopreneurs that are making success happen. The life of an entrepreneur endures many challenging and triumphant moments. And then there's everything else in between. So that's what we're here to talk about today. And I'd like to introduce Judy Lynn with Harmonic Living. Welcome. Thanks, Susie. <laughs> I'm really happy to be here with you today and all of our listeners. And man, when you say everything in between, there is a lot of stuff in between. <laughs> entrepreneur, an entrepreneur, oh my goodness. Absolutely. The first three to five years I find in the journey of entrepreneurship is really that make or break stage, right? And so really what is vital to our success is keying in on the 20% of our efforts that are going to give us those 80% of the results that we are really ultimately trying to achieve. And so I love hearing the stories and the journeys of entrepreneurship. There's great opportunities to learn, to grow, and then you learn about people and uh, why they came about to start these businesses and why they have so much passion and conviction. Tell me a little bit about you and your business and how you help your clients. Wow. Okay. Well, I am a transitional coach, really. I started out as an EFT practitioner, emotional freedom technique te uh, practitioner, and certified in that and the law of attraction. And then I just kind of evolved and evolved into being a transitional coach for women mainly, although I do work with a few men, but I mainly focus my business on women, entrepreneurs, and I deal heavily with relationships, the relationship with money, ourselves, um, our business, our customer, our spouses, our children, whatever, but mainly... I love working with women who are really wanting to take their business or their life to the next level, and they're in the middle of a major transition. And I'm really, I have recreated myself many times throughout my life. <laughs> this business is my latest endeavor, and I think this is the one I'm going to take out because this is really my absolute passion, and the transformations have been amazing that I've been able to experience with clients. And um, so, I, I help people transition through major life events in their life and with extreme charisma and excitement and a new, to they, they fall totally in love with life again. <laughs> right? Isn't that what we all want is to have fulfillment and happiness and this sense of peace and these skills and abilities, these yes. coping mechanisms and these healing modalities that help us um, handle the different things that come at us, the different obstacles that life provides and circumstances. So mm -hmm. share, if you would, about, I know I've experienced wonderful benefits from your EFT sessions. Uh -huh. And I know a lot of people may not know what EFT is, what it stands for, and how it works. So can you share a little bit more about that? Absolutely. EFT is where I started as a practitioner, and it's such a powerful tool that I included in my coaching sessions and all my coaching programs now. But what EFT basically is, is it combines modern psychology with tapping on the meridian points, some of the main meridian points of our heads and bodies. Only instead, it's the same kind of meridian points that you use, of course, with acupuncture or acupressure. But we use our fingertips instead of needles. So anybody can learn it. And it's wonderful for releasing limiting beliefs and reprogramming or re rewiring our programming and getting rid of those toxic, immobilizing, negative emotions that, that create us to self-sabotage ourselves in a lot of areas of our lives. Right. I know that you have a series of videos that you've done as well, and so there's always these new ways that you're providing this work to your clients and to the people that are really needing this. Let's go back a little bit, and I want to talk about your journey again as an entrepreneur and how you came to this work, what the transition process of you really coming to, like, I'm going to start this business. Because that's a really big decision um, mm -hmm. for someone to make in their lives is to actually make that decision, I'm going to do this. Um, what was that like for you? It was 
it's twofold. It was a, a, a complete, like, I'm jumping in with two feet knowing absolutely I don't know what I'm doing. And then the other part of it, it was like a natural progression because my whole life I've been interested in this type of work. And, um, and so I, I, I kind of look at my life in, in segments, in pieces. The first piece of it, I was a full-time mom, raised my kids. But the second part of my um, se section of my life, I kind of stepped on stage at the age of 35 and became a singer, a professional singer, and enjoyed a really successful business as a singer for the next 23 years. And during that process, I was in this huge self-growth mode. And what evolved into this business was when the bottom fell out of the economy a few years back, I had always, I had been helping people with EFT because it was something I stumbled across, across accidentally and actually was able to quit smoking using it, so I began to help people. And that just kind of evolved into my thinking, you know, I want to do this on a much larger level and a much bigger scale and really help the masses if I can. Yeah. So what started out as a, a an EFT practice evolved into a full-time um, coaching program because it's one thing to take someone out of an immediate crisis using emotional freedom technique and teach them how to lower the toxic emotions but it's another thing to provide for them a complete transformation where their life, every area of their life changes. Wow, that's really powerful work. I know, again, I've experienced it, and I'm sure a lot of your clients are experiencing really amazing results from it. Do you have an example of a story that you can share of um, some things that you've seen, some successes, some wins um, that your clients have experienced in in this transformation process? I do. I have, I have, I don't know which one can I pick. I'll give you, I'll give you two real quick ones. There was a woman that I've been working with since last October in a transformational program called Tapping Into Wealth. And this program, I'm an authorized coach for Margaret Lynch's Tapping Into Wealth um, program. And so I've I started back in October with her, and what has transpired for her has been nothing short of miraculous. She started out, I think she was making, I don't know, around a thousand a month at a, at a full-time job that she was at only because she wanted to, you know, needed to support herself, which a thousand wasn't enough to do it. But she was also a coach on the side, or that's where she was going with her where she wanted to go with her true profession. And we began this program, and not only has she now, in six-month time, she's now up to 2800 I think she made 2800 and it just grows by 200 or so wow. a month. And it has transformed her relationship with herself, and with she's no longer a, someone who can be manipulated by others, which was an issue in her life. And we look at all of these programmings that we get as we're young, and she, we delved into all of that stuff and addressed the programming, the emotions, the sabotage, the way she goes into backlash, the way she, um, the way you don't set a goal because you know, for instance, if I set this goal and I fail, or people laugh at me. I'm going to feel like a failure, and I don't want to risk ever feeling like that because somewhere along the line, way back in, way back when, it might have happened, and we just made this vow that we're never going to take that risk again and be that vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And we don't even realize these programs are operating, but they are, and they operate in big ways in every aspect of our life. So she just has transformed hugely. And I just, it is hugely a word, <laughs> and I just now. spoke. Yeah, yeah, it is now. And I just spoke to her this morning, and she was sharing with me her awareness level has just shot through the roof. And she just says, you know, I'm really aware that that I how I go into these these backlashes. I call them backlashes, but she she referred to it as something else. But how she do, did a certain thing, and how she is catching herself now and saying, that's my old program. I'm at, at programming. I'm choosing a new way, and and choosing a new way and bringing new things into her life, new people, more supportive of her, money, and her business, of course, is skyrocketing because of that. And, of course, when you step into your own power, 
it's phenomenal what happens in your out in your outer world and and how you bring the things to yourself just by the mere fact that you're your charismatic nature is just a drawing all of this to you, you know, just having that enthusiasm for life and joy for what you're doing and complete love, respect, and trust in yourself for what you're doing and how you're doing it. Wow. One, one of my curiosities is we do have these positive influences that come into our lives. Mm -hmm. And even in our childhood, you know, there's positive memories and positive influences. And I think as we continue through life and the different stages of life and experiences, you know, we build these masks and these judgments and, right, all of these uh, things that block us from really the truth of the matter and what is real. And I like to also utilize the power of kind of referring back and saying, what inspired you? As a kid, I think it's very interesting how the seeds are planted early in our stages as to the directions um, that our destiny can go and what we're really meant to do and really be aligned with the purpose of what we're doing. Um, and I like to throw off the wall questions because I like to make things fun, right? So um, one of the inspirations I'm curious about is what's a favorite childhood movie and what does it represent for you? All right, one of my absolute <laughs> favorite movies is Overboard with Kurt Russell and uh, Goldie Hawn. It just I'm makes me laugh to hear you say to hear when I think of that movie. I just laugh. It's hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> I know, but I love it. Not only is Kurt Russell adorable, and so is Goldie Hawn, <laughs> but I love that movie because it blended the blue collar worker and the snobby white rich chick, right? And it kind of showed how both sides had their issues, had their problems, and both sides weren't happy in a certain area of their life, and then it blended them quite by accident or quite by Kurt on purpose with, for Kurt on Kurt's part to kind of get back at her, but um, it blended the two, and they ended up really appreciating you know, with unbeknownst to her that she was actually rich because she had amnesia, not to give the movie away or anything. But they ended up finding out that they loved each other and really appreciating how both um, the rich and the poor both come from certain, for me, it was like certain uh, paradigms, family paradigms or belief systems and programmings and how that came together and how they blended it. Not... Not just because of that, because it was an absolute hysterical movie, too. It was funny. <laughs> but I thought the movie was excellent in the way it portrayed that. Yeah. It also conveys messages that deal with relationships with money, poverty, you know, um, being, you know, having wealth. And then it also has the relationships, the family relationships, the romantic love relationships, like, you know, many movies do. But there's particular reasons why that movie really spoke to you. What would you say is... Um, uh, why it's most meaningful to you when you think of that movie? Well, I think, you know, doing what I do now, it gives the movie a new meaning for me. Originally, it was just funny and fun to watch, and Kurt Russell's adorable. But, um, but I think now the movie holds much more significance for me because I think it really shows how, because I came from a belief system that rich people, wealthy people, which I will never be, was one of my beliefs, systems, you know, because I came from this certain family, really I, I believed for the longest time that they were happy. What did they not to ha have to be happy about, right? They right. didn't have a worry in the world. Right. And this movie really, um, I can see now in it that that wasn't the case. Every one of those people that were rich in that movie, you know, her, her husband, her mother, you know, all of them were not happy. They all had huge issues and were reaching outside of themselves for some source of happiness that was not obtainable no matter how much money they had. Absolutely. And so it has a whole new meaning for me. Now. Uh, this really segues well into something that you shared with me on how the EFT work has been so powerful in your life. And as an entrepreneur, again, we're faced with the challenges of how to dispense um, what we're going to choose to spend our money on. What what are we going to invest in ourselves if with, and within our business? Yeah. There's a lot of influences and a lot of inspiration out there, and so navigating our way. So sh if you could share a story, what you feel comfortable with, on a time that you've really overcome a challenge, how the EFT work helped you to overcome that. 
Oh, sure. Yeah. Sure. Uh, you know, video is huge in today's entrepreneurial world, right? I yeah. mean, everybody's doing video, and if you want to get known and you want people to know you and your work and be able to really reach people on a much more intimate level and a lot more of them, you need to do video. And about a year and a half ago, I stepped out and did my first video. It was horrifying to make that video. And I have to laugh at my first videos now because they're, I mean, no, they're still up there because I think it shows a growth. And if I can do it, believe me, Susie, anybody can do it. Right, right. But but I looked into it, and here's the thing where EFT really helped me because this is where I would have ran with my tail tucked between my legs before. I put out my first video, put it on Facebook, and I got a huge response this long of people bounce, two people bantering back and forth about how I did not address the issue that the video was about properly. And complete criticism by this one person. Complete criticism. He called me names, everything. I mean, it was like, I was, it was my first video. I was horrified. And I, you can bet, I sat down and I had to do some tapping on the triggers. What was that, you know, the, that criticism triggered something so deep in me. I was ready to quit. You know, I wasn't going to do another video. I was going to stay hidden. I wasn't going to Further And thank God I didn't quit because look at the people this past year that I've been able to help with my free videos on YouTube and with the, the coaching programs and just EFT sessions alone. And if I had quit, those people still wouldn't have had that help or that transformation. So I stepped into it and did the EFT and it really, uh, it really shifted my beliefs and my fears. And it's not, you know, it's something that you can, it, it can alleviate it right away for you. But there's so many different aspects and there's so many different triggers that can take place in something like that that you just have to really stay in a place of awareness. And every time one crops up its little cute little green head, you have to step back in, do some more EFT and really be aware of what's happening and, and tell your truth as you tap through the points. Absolutely. Staying with that. I'm curious on, um, again, talking about the different decisions that we need to make in our day and focusing on 20% of our output, creating, you know, 80% of really positive results. Uh -huh. I work with many uh, clients that one of the top, top barriers to entrepreneurial success and staying focused and actually completing the tasks, following through. Um, is really about having some discipline and structure in how your day goes or how you manage the flow of your work and your office hours and all of that. Yeah. Can you share some of maybe, I, I like to think of them as success habits. They're habits that we know that we're taking that are bringing us closer to what we want. And they're little, those little simple habits. How do you structure your day and make the decisions of focusing the tasks that are going to be most relevant to what it is that you're trying, your outcome, the try, the result you're trying to get from that. I think, you know, in answer to your question, one of the biggest challenges to do that for entrepreneurs or people who work from home is the mentality and getting into the mindset that it is your business. And that took a while to move into for me. Uh, so I began to set success habits that would reinforce the fact that this is a business. And I had to speak to my husband about it because, you know, I work in this, in this back room here. And uh, he would come in and just start talking to me about something else, you know, while I'm working. And I had to say, you have to pretend I'm at another office. So I would, you know, I'd get up at a certain time every day. I'd get up at 7 o'clock every day. I'd go down and make my coffee. If I have any, uh, any Skyping and video um, processes going on during the day, then I'll get ready. Sometimes I just do it in my baseball cap. You know, we're all entrepreneurs, and we've been had those days, too, where we can work in our slippers. Absolutely. But, so I'll take a shower, get my coffee. I'll come into my office, and I work. And I, and I had to also learn that 
what you were saying, taking care of yourself. And I've just built that into my system is I uh, have created on my calendar a little reminder every two and a half hours to get up and go do something else for 10 minutes. Stretch, go outside, take a walk, you know, do something else besides sit at my desk and do my work because because we love what we do, we can spend hours doing it, which is the beauty of doing, you know, living your passion and, and um, earning a living doing what you love. But the downside of it, that is you, we can lose balance really easy. Absolutely. So I really appreciate your question on how to, you know, what I do to add those little success factors in because I, I have just plugged in that little factor for myself of taking a 10-minute break every two and a half hours. And then I quit work at five as if I'm in an office. Unless I have a special client uh, session that I have to do mm-hmm. or a teleseminar program that I'm going to be doing in the evening for those that work else, you know, outside of the home. I generally stay to those hours so that I have time for my family, time for down, downtime, because we can't really be creative if we're so overwhelmed. I always love to share these different facets of what I'm seeing as I'm uh, experience and connecting with people and one of those facets is I'd love to hear about quirks quirks <laughs> <laughs> so I think they they really shine they bring to light some um, different sides of ourselves that people may not know about so is there a particular yeah. quirk that you have that people don't know about you there is <laughs> And I guess I can share it with you. I mean, nobody knows about this except my grandkids. Woo, this is an exclusive first. This is an exclusive. <laughs> you are the first. My, I have one granddaughter in particular, in particular who is nine years old, and she and I get into this big time. But I, I get over an accident. I just get into this accident, you know, like I'm from England or something. And she talks right back to me like that, and we'll stay like this for many, many hours. And I can't really tell you what started it, but it's an absolute quirk that I love. And I don't plan on giving it up anytime soon. <laughs> Bravo. You are amazing to share that secret. Exclusive. You saw it here first, friends. Oh, my goodness. I love talking in accents. So I love that you have an accent of your own. Sometimes when I have a few drinks, I go into all sorts of different accents, uh, (laughs) southern accents. uh, I kind of mix all the accents together. So I think that's lovely. We're going to have some wonderful conversations to be had. <laughs> <laughs> we absolutely will. We, nobody will know what country we come from, but they're going to they're gonna be accented. How is it that you stay motivated to get up at 7 o'clock every morning, every day to do your work without being somewhere that that's expected of you? Because, again, as entrepreneurs, we have to discipline ourselves and hold ourselves accountable or find that accountability so that we are getting those things done. How do you stay motivated and how do you have accountability in your life? Well, I think there's a few different aspects to, to the answer there. I think the first thing is it's, it's motivating in itself to be doing something that is absolutely a passion of yours, that you love. Because when you're doing something you love, time flies. There is no time, right? I mean, like we talked earlier, you know, you could go until 10 o'clock at night and go, oh my God, I forgot to eat dinner. But, but the other part of that is keeping, because there's part of, you know, we got to face it. There's part of being an entrepreneur and part of doing business that isn't necessarily, we're not the best at technical stuff for me is like, and I don't really like doing it, but it needs to be done marketing. You know, I don't really like doing it, but it needs to be done. And at this point, you know, at a certain point in, in um, someone's business, they may not be to the point yet where they can delegate and hire virtual assistants or even, you know, physical assistants. So uh, doing those types of things and staying motivated to do that, I use EFT to move myself through the resistance of needing to do it. I need to do it, and I resist it like crazy. I procrastinate. I find all kinds of distractions. so easy to do. <laughs> so I'll use EFT to do that. But I think really the, the main thing is, and, I, and this was true in my music when I was uh, a singer for 23 years, is to, to 
go and work until 1.30 in the morning, you know, three nights a week. And I loved what I was doing. I loved it. I, you know, there was a passion that was like, I, I had to do it because I loved it so much. And that's how I feel about my business um, doing this and helping people in this way. So I have to do it because Absolutely. I love it so much. Absolutely. And that motivates me and yeah. inspires me. And yeah. the gratification that comes by really being tuned in to your talents yeah. and your abilities and the personal development and growth that it takes to look at yourself with all these different um, areas of resistance, like you said, and uh, utilizing that in a way, using that information in a way to help you grow and learn and move on to other areas of resistance to learn and grow and move forward. And there's so many different um, areas, spaces, I like to call them, yes. uh, inner spaces, our inner world. And there's so many inner spaces to explore. And so it doesn't, it's, it's tough work. It's transformational work, personal growth, soul yes. growth, self-development, entrepreneurship, all of, um, you know, if you have signed on to be a seeker and a lifelong learner in any of these areas, it's tough work and it's hard to go to some of these deep, dark places. And yes. I think that's why I really became fascinated and enjoyed your work of EFT because Again, if I'm going to be involved with something, I have to like it. If I'm going to be successful and stick with it, like you said, we have to like what and enjoy what we're doing. Then it becomes this natural, like you were saying, momentum that becomes motivating and helps you get through those difficult times where you want to give up. Um, but they're the t defining factors in how you work through that to pr push through further. And that's why I feel that um, solo entrepreneurs and entrepreneurship is so inspiring and I like to share these stories so now that we've really um, we've learned more about you and your business and and your quirks and um, <laughs> um, and ways that you really have helped um, change people's lives in really powerful transformational ways mm -hmm. um, how is it that people can learn more about you and your business and your work and um, and do you have any um, events or anything that you'd like to share with the viewers about what you have coming up next for them? Oh, sure. Well, I have a website they can visit, and there's a lot to learn a lot more about EFT and what I do. That's harmoniclivingnow.com. Okay. Also, um, right there on the front page, there you can get a free ebook that tells them a little bit about tapping and a free video from me addressing um, something bothersome. You know, frustration, anger, di um, uh, disappointment, <laughs> you know, remorse, any, you know, some of these things that we all go through every day. And I just addressed, he said, like anywhere from a five to a ten minute video once a week that comes in their inbox. With, and then it also includes a delicious recipe. So they can <laughs> sign up for the um, Monday morning shift newsletter, receive Great. a video and a free ebook. And then I would love to, uh, to have them visit the website and then please look, check out the Tapping Into Wealth program because it is a phenomenal, transformational, intensive program that will change, completely change your life. What I love most about your videos is that you actually teach people the techniques so that when they watch a video, they can actually take that technique and practice it. You're teaching people actually... Um, the techniques and the principles behind EFT and I think that that really is great information to share because people again that may not know about it this work um, the way that you your videos are wonderful and um, the education from it is uh, is really valuable so thank you I'm glad you found value in them yes well this was so much fun, Judy. You are literally my first guest, and I could not have picked a better, more special guest. Oh, thank you. Um, you're so inspiring. You're an inspiring solopreneur and um, really making things happen in big ways, really up-leveling yourself and your business. And my greatest hope today is that the viewers out there that have been watching, that this video inspires you in some sort of way to take what I call an inspired action. Um, or even get you thinking about success habits that you can bring into your life. Little simple things that are getting you closer to what it is that you want. 
So thank you again for joining us today. Thank you, Judy. You're so welcome. And if I can say one more thing sure, to please. you and to um, anyone who watches this video is celebrate. Celebrate every little success in your business and in your life. Learn how to go into that gratitude, that appreciation, and just celebrate everything and invest in yourself. Okay, we are so in sync because I'm going to grab right here behind my little sink. <laughs> I actually have a word, and what does it say? Celebrate. Yes. Celebrate success Perfect. is so important. Um, we're always so focused forward. Really, be in the moment and be grateful yeah. for what hey. you have. You're so um, right, and we're so used to, you know, criticizing for every little boo-boo or for not being good enough, right? But we forget that when we do do something, we don't celebrate. We don't give ourselves the, the pat on the back that we should, but we're quick to criticize ourselves. All right, so take inspired action, celebrate, and invite more success habits into your life. Visit yes. Judy Lynn at www.harmonicliving.com. Stay tuned for more Organized Zen videos. You can learn more about Organized Zen and what it is as a lifestyle organizer that can help you change your life. You can visit at www.organizedzenliving.com.